Thank you for coming to Dale Chanel's 40s World, where we do Bible reading and sometimes we dialogue. Always read your Bible, always stay prayed up, and be good to yourself. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Dale Chanel's 40s World. Okay, let's go right on into chapter 27 of Genesis, where we're going to be talking about Jacob or reading about Jacob gets Isaac's blessing. Okay. That's a bad thing to miss your blessing because you were too weak and too in denial to understand what a birthright is all about. So anyway, we're going to get right on into it. Chapter 27, verse 1. When Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he could no longer see, he called for Esau, his older son, and said to him, my son. Here I am, he answered. Isaac said, I am now an old man and don't know the day of my death. Now then, get your weapons, your quiver, and your bow. And go out to the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare me the kind of tasty food that I like and bring it to me to eat so that I may give you my blessing before I die. Now Rebecca was listening as Isaac spoke to his son Esau. When Esau left for the open country to hunt gain and bring it back, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, Look, I overheard your father say to your brother Esau, Bring me some gain and prepare me some tasty food to eat, so that I may give you my blessing in the presence of the Lord before I die. Now, my son, listen carefully and do what I tell you. Go out to the flock and bring me two choice young goats so I can prepare some tasty food for your father just the way he likes it. Then take it to your father to eat so that he may give you his blessings before he dies. Jacob said to Rebecca, his mother, for my brother Esau is a hairy man and I'm a man with smooth skin. What if my father touches me? I would appear to be tricking him and would bring down a curse on myself rather than a blessed, excuse me, rather than a blessing. Okay, I have two problems with this. I have the problem of um, Rebecca, Isaac's wife, deceiving her husband. We all know from the very beginning of the birth of um, Esau, and Jacob. Esau was the one that came out first. Jacob was the one grabbing on the heel. Okay, because he had to come out second. But anyway, uh, the parents were both split on who they love. Instead of both parents loving both children, and definitely, I mean, I'm saying, I'm sure they love their children, but loving them equally uh, and respecting the differences that they had amongst themselves, their different personalities, their different traits, just because they were twins, okay, doesn't mean they all share, or both of them share the same charisma, the same charm, the same um, personality characteristics of how they view their life and how they want to live their life. But of course, uh, Isaac favored more so Isu. Uh, because he was the firstborn and he just liked it that Esau was a man who liked to do things with his hands and go out there and chase wild game and bring it back and, you know, strip it down and get ready, prepare it for eating, you know, that kind of thing. And um, so I said Esau was more like um, a man's man, you know, hands on, rugged and that kind of features. Um and then you had Jacob, he was like more motherly, more nurturing, uh, more sensitive, I would say. Still a man, but more on the delicate end of things. Um, like you would take Esau to go out there and be a wrestler, a free thinker, just a man to himself, you know, fending for himself. You would see uh, Jacob in a business suit, in the office, you know, nice hands. Um, did anything but hard work or hard labor. He was more into the uh, leadership, executive order type of a guy. You go, you know, do what I say and come back with a result. You know, <laughs> he was one of those business suit time when men 
that wanted everything from caviar to champagne, okay? Every day, all day. That's kind of life he was um, certain to live, in a sense. But those were the two differences that I, you know, found, you know, very prevalent between the two. But then why would, you know, she shared the same birth canal, uh, gave them the same food that she digested, put to her mouth. They go down her esophagus into her stomach, feeding both children. So you would have thought that the love would have been for both of them, you know. And then Issa would have been the one, since he was the oldest, by a few minutes or so, or seconds, to look after the younger son. But, you know, that's just how I look at things. But we'll keep on reading. Um, we're, we're, um, let me go back here. We're going to go back to now, um, Chapter 27, verse 5. Now, Rebecca was listening as Isaac spoke to his son, Esau, when Esau left for the open country to hunt game and bring it back. Rebecca said to her son, Jacob, look, I overheard your father say to your brother, Esau, bring me some game and prepare me some tasty food to eat so that I may give you my blessing in the presence of the Lord. Now, listen, son. Listen carefully and do what I tell you. Go out to the flock and bring me two choice goats. So that I can prepare some tasty food for your father just the way he likes it. Okay, we went over that. Um, and then we went over chapter um, verses 11 when he was telling his mother, hey, he's a smooth type man. Esau was a more hairy man. Just because my father is blind doesn't mean like he's a fool. And he's just worrying uh, about bringing a curse rather than a blessing that he thinks his mother would um, presume. Excuse me would be the outcome of trying to deceive Isaac. Okay, um, verse 13, his mother said to him, My son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Go and get them for me. See, I ain't like that because, you know, got too many women. See, this is me talking. I'm just thinking while I'm trying to read, but I have my own opinion when I am reading scripture. I just don't understand why women always want the, the, the uh, when they want to do something deceptive, and not right. Why they want to say let the curse fall on me? Like no, nah, when you saying you, you talking about the female gender race. You now we already got it done to us when the apple uh, with the fruit of the tree that the, um, Satan, the serpent, had convinced Eve that everything was safe and we could do those things. And look where we were. Same thing here. I mean, sometimes I think we are cursed as a woman and we continue to curse ourselves. I mean, women, we got to do better. We really got to do better. Oh, for the Lord to look at us a little bit better. I mean, just because things are just down our line of heritage, of doing these, you know, easy manipulative type things to men. Come on, we got to do better. We got to do better. I know the Lord will show us favor. But we got to do this collectively as a gender. Ooh, but anyway, that's just my spiel moving on. Uh, She's going to say, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Go and get them for me. Uh, verse 14. So he went and got them and brought them to his mother. And she prepared some tasty food just the way his father liked it. Then Rebecca took the best clothes of Esau, her older son, which she had in the house, and put them on her younger son, Jacob. She also covered his hands and the smooth parts of his neck, the goat skin. Then she handed her son, Jacob, the taste of food and the bread she had made. He went to his father and said, My father, yes, my son, he answered. Who is it? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Please sit up and eat some of my game. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that you may give me your blessing. Isaac asked his son, How did you find it so quickly, my son? See, he, Isaac, I already think it's something strange, but you know. Rebecca there in the, in the um, background feeding her son on. And you would think both of them would have two different voices. Just my perspective. But, you know, not looking good. Not looking good. Okay. Uh, the Lord, your God, gave me success, he replied. Then I said to Jacob, come near so I can touch you, my son, to know whether you really are my son, Esau, or not. So I'm thinking, but that done. He's blind. We know. Is he deaf also? I don't understand. I just really don't. Um, just how he could be deceived. But God has his way. God will have his way. Okay. Jacob went close to his father, Isaac, who touched him and said, The voice 
is the voice of Jacob. And he was right dead on that one. But the hands are the hands of Esau. And see, that's when he should have prayed for discernment. But like I said, God will turn everything that's bad into good. Give him time, okay? He will make a way out of the evilness that people try to throw at you and send for and think they're going to prevail. <laughs> God can make anything bad turn to uh, someone's favor. If only we just believe and believe in him. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Moving on. He said, uh, but he... But his hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize him, for his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau. So he blessed them. Are you really my son, Esau? He asked. I am, he replied. Then he said, my son, bring me some of your game to eat so that I may give you my blessing. Jacob brought it to him, and he ate, and he brought some wine, and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, come here, my son, and kiss me. So he went to him and kissed him when Isaac caught the smell of his clothes. He blessed him and said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you of heaven's dew and of earth richness and abundance of grain and new wine. May nations serve you and peoples bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may the son of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed and those who bless you be blessed. After Isaac finished blessing him and Jacob had scarcely left his father's presence, his brother Esau came in from hunting. He too prepared some tasty food and brought it to his father. Then he said to him, My father, sit up and eat some of my gains that you may give me your blessing. His father Isaac asked him, Who are you? I am your son, he answered, your firstborn Esau. Isaac trembled violently and said, Who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? I ate it just before you came, and I blessed him, and indeed he will be blessed. When Esau heard his father's words, he burst out with a loud and bitter cry, and said to his father, Bless me, me too, my father. But he said, Your brother came deceitfully and took your blessing. Esau said, Isn't he rightly named Jacob? He has deceived me. These two times he took my birthright. And now he's taking my blessing. Then he asked, haven't you reserved any blessing for me? Isaac answered Esau, I have made him Lord over you and have made all his relatives his servants. And I have sustained him with rain and new wine. So what can I possibly do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, do you have only one blessing for my father? Bless me too, my father. Then Esau wept aloud. His father Isaac answered him, Your dwelling will be away from the earth's richness, away from the dew of heavens above. You will live by the sword and you will serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke from off your neck. Okay, and indeed that was the end of chapter 27. And we saw how deceitfulness and the um, jealousy can reign far back then that it can come up to our center we're living in and still remain just as strong. Okay, uh, just giving you a little edification of the name Jacob in the Bible. It means he grasped the heel. Birth data, born a twin with Esau, the two fought even in their mother's womb. Occupation, shepherd, livestock owner, best known for being notorious, notoriously deceptive. He tricked his brother, Isu, out of his inheritance twice. First one was his birthright because he was just hungry. And if he could feed his father some food after he got finished, you know, hunting and preparing the game for, you know, everyone to eat, why couldn't he do the same? Why did he have to just... You know, be so famished and so thirsty. While he was out gaming, he was just too lazy to cook himself. That's how he lost his birthright, because his brother Jacob was there preparing meat and, and food and everything. And he just was like hungry and tired. And he just like, feed me. I'll give you whatever you want without thinking what he was doing. Okay, that's how he lost his birthright. Then he turned around and lost his blessings with the help of his own mother. And her deceptive ways, because Jacob didn't know anything about it. The mother knew everything about it. So he 
had deceitfulness going on with his brother as well as his mother. So, of course, he's going to feel like he's left alone, especially when his father is obviously dying. Okay, so that was um, what was known for Horace Isu being tricked out of his birthright as well as his inheritance. Um, earning the name Israel, meaning he struggles with God. Being the father of 12 sons who became the patriarchs of Israel, 12 tribes. Okay, so that was a little edification on the name Jacob. And we'll pick up tomorrow, God uh, willing, for chapter 28 of more of Jacob flees to Lebanon, a Laban. Um, I think it is pronounced Lebanon, um, to seek res rescue, ooh, rescue, to be rescued. Uh, from anything that Jacob is going to try to put on him since he's over him anyway. And he's just fleeing because he's just upset and he just don't know which way to go. But he knows he can't stay there. Or he might put his hands on somebody, including his mother. Okay, which we knew that wouldn't be right at all. But that's all I have for chapter 27. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you found some uh, understanding about the two brothers, the mother and the father, and how... Uh, blessings and inheritance can uh, and birthrights can be taken from you uh, if you don't know how to justly um, be right there and um, praying for things to work out the way they should. But again, like I said, things that people put out negatively on you and it's meant to destroy you and take you down to the lowest depths of any type of uh, negativity, the Lord can just turn it all the way around. When you think you win it, he'll turn it around. And what you meant to hurt somebody else with it, it'll turn around, bounce back, and hit you with it tenfold. Okay, so uh, keep that in mind when you're trying to do and think devilish uh, ways and, and thinking you're going to get somebody, you know, done right by your hands involved and, you know, seeking Satan and his minions to do it. Guess who got the... Uh, Guess who got the cover of all covers? The healing of all healing. The wedges. I mean, not the wedges, but the hedges that can be put around you for security. That's the Lord. And only the Lord can provide it. God bless you all. Stay prayed up. Read your Bibles every day. And um, definitely be at peace with yourselves. Amen. Good night.